I have to admit, as much as I hate Christmas, and I really do hate Christmas, I do enjoy Christmas Carol. And this is probably my favourite version of the story. It's not just because this is the first version of Christmas Carol I ever saw, nor is it because it's animated. It's more to do with the fact that it's Disney, and that it's not a cheesy commercial tie-in. This could have so easily become a cheesy comedy, and thankfully this version of the story, short as it is, being barely 25 minutes long, manages to capture the essence of the story successfully, remains respectful to the history of the story, and conveys the emotions in a very sincere way. Other animated versions are either simply carbon copies of the live-action counterparts, and with the more recent Christmas Carol released by Disney, uh, for me, that one just, just tried too hard. We all know the story. Our Christmas Carol tells the story of a bitter old miser named Ebenezer Scrooge and his transformation into a gentler, kindlier man after visitations by the ghosts of his former business partner Jacob Marley and the ghosts of Christmas past present and yet to come. It's a story that is mainly about sympathy as well as humiliation and regret. It's a story about psychological wounds, disturbing memories that haunt us in the quiet lonely times, and the Scrooge that we meet is a cold, stingy and greedy semi-recluse. A man after my own heart. And the other Scrooge, a benevolent, sociable man whose generosity and goodwill toward all men earned for him a near saintly reputation. The first film adaption of Christmas Carol was made in 1901, the first of 185 various adaptations. The first known animated version, I could find anyway, of the story was released in 1962. And Mickey's Christmas Carol is only the fourth animated version of the story ever made. It was also the first original Mickey Mouse theatrical cartoon produced in over 30 years since The Simple Things. It was the last time Clarence Nash voiced Donald Duck for the company and was the only original voice actor in the film. It was nominated for Best Animated Short Film in 1984. The 1980s was a transitional period for the Disney studio as it was trying to redefine itself, keep up with an ever-changing, fast-paced world and was just on the cusp of a technological breakthrough. Financially, the studio was in trouble in regards to its feature-length animations and it was the shorts that kept the studio going. This is obviously not the movie that reinstated Disney's focus, that belongs to Basil the Great Mouse Detective, but it was one of the shorts that shifted the Disney legacy to show it could do more than just appeal to a family audience. Instead of retelling children's fairy tales, Disney took fairy tales made for adults, like The Christmas Carol, translating them into something more child friendly. It made adult fairy tales accessible for children. With this version of the story, what you see is what you get. It remains focused and keeps things simple and straightforward. There are jokes here and there, but they don't distract too much. Disney has done satire and parody from the get-go of various classic stories, putting their characters into iconic roles, but unlike with movies like The Prince and the Pauper or The Three Musketeers, where it's basically just forcing the characters into various roles, the movie captures the essence of the story and is actually pretty clever with the visuals too. What set this film apart was that unlike other animated versions of the story that came before it, and indeed after it, it wasn't a pale attempt to imitate the past. It wasn't trying to be an animated version of a live action movie. It's cleverly written, well staged, and animated with real spirit and a sense of fun. It may have seemed odd that Mickey Mouse was not the focus, and perhaps that made the film lack the magic of what is usually known from the Disney studio, especially through this decade. Perhaps it could have used a more ironic spin, but I guess this simply was not in the nature of Disney's legacy. The movie opens in an illustrated storybook fashion inspired by the painting The Seasons to be Jolly by Carol Barks. These illustrations perfectly set the tone for what we are about to see, giving it a really cosy feeling. Scrooge himself is played by Scrooge McDuck, a cartoon character created in 1947 as a work for hire by Carl Barks for the Walt Disney Company. It was an obvious choice as the character was named after Ebenezer Scrooge. Bob Cratchit is played by Mickey Mouse, as already mentioned, which to me was an interesting choice. He's hard-working, kind-hearted soul, an innocent but vulnerable character. And Mickey's gone through many changes in his 85 years, but this remains pretty faithful to the character's nature, really. Interestingly, the three ghosts went through various changes on what iconic Disney characters would portray them. At one point, Merlin from Sword in the Stone was planned to be the ghost of Christmas past, and the ghost of Christmas future was going to be the evil witch from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Wouldn't that have been interesting? 
Looking at the film now, knowing this, it works having Pete, as the old witch is so easily recognised even just by her silhouette. It just wouldn't have been as mysterious. As far as I know and can remember, this is the only version of Christmas Carol where Ghost of Christmas Future actually speaks. There are a few problems with this movie in that it could have tried just a little harder to be a bit more whimsical with the portrayals of the ghosts. Jiminy Cricket as the Ghost of Christmas Past is perhaps the strangest choice of the whole movie. None of the three ghosts appear very ghost-like in their animation, and after seeing Marley's ghost, this was a little disappointing. The film could have been a little more experimental here, and I feel it missed a great opportunity to do so, but at the same time, holding back on that allowed the story and pacing of the film to get more focus. Daisy Duck is Scrooge's love interest, which was pretty risky, seeing as Daisy is technically Donald's love interest, but I guess here she was really the only female duck of the Disney cast at the time that was suitable, and it would have been pointless and out of place to invent a new character to fill the role. Donald Duck as Scrooge's nephew, Fred, was interesting too. Donald is shown as a short-tempered and impulsive character, and seeing him as a joyous and generous soul was pretty refreshing, if a little out of character. Minnie Mouse has no lines at all in the film in her portrayal as Mrs Cratchit, but to me, just her expressions alone are enough to convey how she feels about the state her family is in. Willie the Giant from Mickey and the Beanstalk also seemed like an odd choice, as this character seemed a little obscure, not to mention Willie is an antagonist originally. However, the Ghost of Christmas Present is a big character, literally and figuratively, so it does make sense to have the giant portray him, but I do have to ask, couldn't you have used another more well-known character and just make them a giant? I don't know, sometimes I, I worry that I'm just reading too much into these things. I've already briefly spoken about Pete as the Ghost of Christmas Future, and as interesting as it would have been to have the old witch here, this is probably the most successful choice of the whole film. Essentially, the ghosts are meant to be neutral characters, neither good nor evil. So here, when the Ghost of Christmas Future shoves Scrooge into his own grave, this is the most memorable part of the whole movie. If a little cruel. Scrooge sees the coffin open to reveal a fiery end, a vision of hell. Scrooge's change in attitude is not toward Christmas itself, it's about his attitude toward his fellow man throughout the entire year. He changes his ways, becomes charitable, giving his money to those who really need it, not in a desperate attempt to buy forgiveness, but in a genuine act of joyous giving. He had the means before, just didn't have the will. That was what changed. The story of A Christmas Carol may be associated with Christmas in name, but for me it's a story that teaches how our attitude should be to other people all year round. I hate Christmas because of what society has made it. True, not everyone celebrates Christmas and we have to respect that and at the same time I feel we should be generous and charitable all year round when we can, not just because a religious holiday dictates us to or that is, is just expected of us. The changes that Scrooge makes changes the lives of his friends and family for the rest of their lives not just one day. It's amazing what one small act of kindness can do. I love this story and I love this version of it and it really deserves more attention. I'm Mad Munchkin. Merry Christmas and stay creative. Hey, thanks for watching this video and before you go don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button. That will help me out a lot. Or if you really like this video check out some of my other stuff I've done. And hey, go ahead and subscribe too if you want. You can also show your support by supporting me on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, or you can also check out my Deviant Art page for my artworks, as well as find out how you can buy my artwork and even get some commissioned work too. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.